Hello, so today we are going to start our fiber weaving on a simple loom. And please remember there are three parts to a weaving. There's the loom, which is the device that you're going to create your weaving on. And then there's the warp strings, and that's gonna be this string that we wrap around the loom. And the warp strings don't move. And then there's the weft, which is the yarn that we're gonna weave into the loom. So how do we set up our loom? You're gonna start with a piece of tape. You wanna take the tape, a piece, and you wanna write your name and the day that you have art on the tape. Day A, day B, day C. And then you're gonna peel it off and put it on the loom. And then the same side as the cardboard loom, you're gonna take the end of the warp string. So see how the warp string is wrapped around on this cone? There's one end to it. And so you're gonna take that and lay that down. And you can lay it down anywhere on your, your loom. You can lay it in the middle. Obviously, you don't wanna cover up your name. You can lay it over to one side. It really doesn't matter. You just wanna tape the end of it to the same side as the side with your name on it, because it's gonna be the back. And then you're gonna take the warp string and you're gonna pull it through the first tooth or the little notch here, I call them teeth, in the loom, and you're going to bring it straight down to the first one at the bottom. So if I flip this over, so you can see the front, it's nice and straight. But on the back here, look what happens. My string crosses over and crisscrosses, but this is the back, so it's okay if it crisscrosses. On the front, it needs to be straight. So if I flip this back over, this is the front, there's no masking tape, so this is the front, and you're just going to keep wrapping the warp string around. Now I have not cut this string, this warp string. I have not cut it because I don't know how much I need. I don't know how much it's going to take to wrap around the loom. So I just leave it on the cone and I keep pulling carefully until I get to the last tooth at the bottom. And all these strings are nice and straight. What I want you to remember is they shouldn't be loosey-goosey like this. Um, they should be nice and taut or tight, but you also don't want to pull so tight that your cardboard bends and your loom strings are sticking up, your warp strings. So you want to pull tight so that they, um, they're not so loose. Let me show you what it looks like if they're too loose. That they kind of can r bounce around and kind of lay next to each other and touch each other. So you want to pull taut or tight. So I need to come back and pull some of these nice and tight. So now when I run my fingers across they don't bounce around too much. This one's a little loose. Um, let's see, make that a little tighter just by pulling the backs of these strings a little bit. Now you won't, if you pull tight enough you wouldn't have to do that. Go back and fix it. So now I'm going to flip it back over to the back and I'm going to take a piece of masking tape and tape the warp string down and now since the warp is attached to the loom I have to cut it off. Now this is the only time you cut. So a lot of people, some students make the mistake of they pull a bunch of warp string and they snip it and then they try to wrap it around the loom and it's not never really long enough. I don't want you to waste the warp string by doing that. I want you to do it just the way you saw me. Find the end of the warp string as it's attached to the cone, lay it down, tape it, and wrap it around. You know you've done it correctly when you start on the back and you end on the back. And when you flip it over, it's the strings are taut and they're straight up and down. So now we've created two parts of our weaving. We have our loom, which is the device, and then we have our warp strings, the vertical strings that do not move. They stay in one spot and we weave the weft into it. So we're going to take a piece of yarn and weave the weft into the warp. Now the weft is horizontal. It goes side to side. And I like to bend the front of my string over because if I just weave it straight like this, it starts to fray and come apart and it kind of gets aggravating. So I always bend the front of my yarn over so hopefully that it doesn't fray. Now I'm gonna zoom in real close so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, when you start, it doesn't matter if you start over or under, but after you start, every time after that it's going to matter. So I'm gonna start over this first warp string and we're gonna do a simple weave where we go over one, under one, over one, under one. So I'm gonna go over one, under one, over one, 
under one, over one, under one. And then you're going to pull the string until you get close to the end. You want to leave a little bit of a tail and then you push it up. Don't leave at the bottom of your limb, leave at the top. Now I'm going to come back the way I came. I went from left to right, no, yeah, right to left. I went from right to left, so now I'm going to go left to right. So when I go left to right, I have to do the opposite of what I did here. So if you look, my pink yarn, the weft, is on top of the warp string. So when I come back, I have to start under this first warp string because I'm doing the opposite of what I did the first time. Over, under, over, under. And as I go across, I just lift up the ones that I'm going under. And now when I pull my string, my warp, weft, I pull. And I like to put my finger in and hold it so I don't pull it too tight. And these warp strings have to stay straight up and down. You don't want to pull so tight that the warp strings start to bend. If they start to bend, about halfway down your weaving, you're going to come across a problem. So here's an example of someone that pulled too tight. They kept pulling too tight as they went across, and it got skinnier and skinnier and skinnier until you get here in the middle where you can hardly get between each of the strings. You actually have to move the strings to go in between them and go over one, under one, over one, and it gets real frustrating. And this person actually um, gave up and they were like, I'm done. I can't, this is just too hard. And it's because they pulled too tight here. So if you start to see your warp strings bend, go back, take your finger and pull and make these loose. I would rather you have a slight little loop on the side here, a slight little gap right here between the yarn and the warp string, then you have the warp string bent. So now I go back to the end, bend it over, and now I go across right to left, opposite of what I did here. So my pink is under the white. So I'm going to go over the first white, first warp string, under, over, under, over. Pull until it touches, and then you push this up close together. And then if this seems like it's a big, big loop here, you can pull it a little bit tighter. All right, so now I'm kind of at the end of this string, so I'm going to take a new string and tie it to the end of this string. Now, if you need help tying the new string to the old string, I'd be happy to do that. And I went ahead and cut this to show you that this had a knot in it when it was um, out of the yarn box, and that's okay because we knot the ends of the strings together anyway, so a knot in the middle of the string is not going to cause a problem. We're just going to weave like it's not even there and pretend it's not there. So now I'm going to bend, I go to the end of the green, the new string, bend it over, and I go under one, over one, under one, over one. And now I'm going to show you a little tip that some of my students um, came up with, and they find that it's helpful, and I think it's helpful too, because my fingers tend to get tired as I keep picking up the warp strings and trying to get them under there. So if you take a pencil, and you put a pencil underneath all your strings, it pops the strings up and then you can just push down and go over the ones you need to go over instead of trying to pick up the ones that you need to go under. So now I'm gonna go back to the end of the, the new string, bend it over, and I'm gonna go over the first one, under the second one, over the third, and as I go across with the pencil, I can just push down on the strings that I'm going over and I don't have to pick any up. Okay, so now you can see my knot is right here, and it has two bunny ears. I like to call them bunny ears. And I want you to make sure that these knots stick up and the bunny ears stick up because this is going to be, the weaving that you see as you weave is going to be the back. The front is going to be this, the part of the weaving that's touching the loom, and when we take it off the loom, we'll flip it over and it'll look beautiful. So we're going to keep all the nasty knots on, the, on this side so that um, we don't have to tuck, mess with them and tuck them in as long as um, we just make the other side the front side. So I'm going to pull this through. Again, gentle on the side. Don't pull too tight. Pull this up, and I'm going to make sure these bunny ears stay up and they don't accidentally get woven into my weaving. That would be a mistake, and it would cause me more problems because I'd have to go back and pull those uh, fish, those, fish, those little um, bunny ears out of there. So this is what you're going to do. To complete this weaving, you just go back and forth, over, under, over, under, alternating differently with each row, tying new strings onto old, to the old strings that are finished, making sure the knots and the bunny ears stick up on this side, and you just keep doing this until you get to the bottom of the loom.
Now, I want to show you what happens if you're weaving incorrectly. So if you alternate incorrectly and you go across the same way that you did the last time. So if you go under the same one and over the same one, this is what's going to happen. When you come across and you pull, you'll see it doesn't loop around this warp string like these did. And when you pull, it comes undone. So if that happens, you just have to go back and alternate correctly, pull it across, and then try again. So I know when I went across this direction that it was um, incorrect and it came undone, so I know I have to go under the first one. But I would probably get a new string and tie to the end of this one before I pulled it across because that's such a short amount that's going to be left over to tie to, and that'd be hard. And that's how you're going to work on your weaving, and you'll just keep going down, down, down your loom and keep adding strings and and tying those on there and keeping the knots and the bunny ears sticking up. All right, third grade, so this is what it's going to look like when you are finished weaving. You're not going to be able to go to the very, very bottom of your loom because it just gets way too tight for your little fingers to fit those um, yarns under and over and under and over. So as you weave, you're pushing it up, and it, when you get to the bottom and you can't push really push it up anymore and you really can't get in those little spaces because the warps are just too tight, then you know you're finished. And then you're going to come and you're going to trim all your bunny ears. So remember that this is the end of my weaving and then this is the beginning. So I'm not going to trim those just yet. Maybe I trim them later, but I'm going to trim them. But all these bunny ears, I'm going to trim. So I'm going to go through, grab them, and snip them. I'm going to snip close to the knot, but not too close. Um, and I'm going to want to definitely get the bunny ears that are hanging off the side of the weaving. All right, now when you trim, these little bits can be thrown away and I want you to make sure you don't trim too close to the knot that they come untied. That's real important. So now all I really have left is the ends here and I'm going to leave those there for now. Maybe I trim it after I take it off the loom. So now I'm ready to take it off the loom. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to take the masking tape off. This masking tape at the end of the string here and this masking tape at the end of the string, the other end can be thrown away. But you are going to keep the one with your name on it. Hopefully it's still sticky on the back. If it's just not sticky because you ripped up half the loom with it like I did with this one, you might need to get a new piece of masking tape because um, mine's got a lot of loom on the back. So I'm going to set that aside. You're going to take the ends, the end warp strings and you're going to kind of pull those and set those on the opposite sides of the loom and you're going to take your scissors and cut right down the middle of all your warp strings. Now being extra careful, you're going to work on one end at, the at a time. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to work on the bottom of my loom and take these strings and pull them down and I'm going to make sure they're nice and straight. So I'm going to straighten these out, space them out, so that they're not crossed over each other. Alright, so now they're nice and separate and equal. And then I'm going to move the cardboard to the side just a little bit crooked. So if you look at the top of my weaving, the strings are still up there. I just moved the cardboard to the side. And now I'm going to tie these in a knot. So I'm going to take these two strings together and I'm going to loop and swoop and make a knot. So I'm going to make a loop. So here's my loop. I'm going to put this through the loop, swoop, pull. Now I don't want to pull really tight because then this will start to kind of wiggle and um, get wavy. So you pull and you stop pulling right when you come to the purple or the end of your weaving. You stop and then you loop and swoop one more time and pull and this time you do want to pull tight. And then look, this little piece is held in place because I knotted it here. So now if I want I can trim that off a little bit. Not too much but I can trim it off a little bit. So now these two strings are tied. I can take and trim those a little bit shorter. Now I'm going to take the next two and I'm going to loop and swoop and pull tie 
not tight, but pull. And then this time I pull tight. And now I'm gonna trim these off, not real short. And now look, I have three left over. I'm gonna do two together and one separate. So I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna tie them, loop and swoop. Tie once, loop and swoop. Tie a second time, but tie tight. And then before I trim these, I'm gonna take one of them and tie them to this third one. Loop and swoop, tie once, loop and swoop, tie tight. And now I'll cut all three of these and trim these down. So now I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm gonna turn it so that the strings are facing me. So I'm gonna pick these strings up, pull them towards me. Now I'm gonna remove the loom and look at this. Look how beautiful this weaving is. This is the side that was touching the loom. This is the side we didn't see. And see how pretty that is? Because all the knots are on the other side. So now I'm gonna take these strings, I'm gonna, string, gonna comb them out and make sure they're nice and straight and they're not crossing over each other. So I know which one goes where. I'm gonna take the first two loop and swoop and tie and then loop and swoop and tie a second time and this time tie tight then I'm gonna trim these shorter not too short can trim this a little bit go to my next one next two loop and swoop tie loop and swoop tie and tight that second one trim and then I've got three left over again so I'm going to start with the first two tie and now tie tight I'm going to take one and tie it to this last one and then I take all three of them hold them together and trim them short. And now, if I zoom out, I have a beautiful weaving. This is the front where you don't see any knots. If I flip it over, here's the back where you see all my knots. And then I take my masking tape and I tape it to the back of my weaving. And even with all that cardboard kind of stuck to the back, this masking tape is sticking to the yarn pretty good. And then you'll take this and you'll put this in the turn-in box so I can take a picture of it and put it at Sonia. And here is your beautiful weaving third grade, way to go.